Mac, how are you? Uh, big win last night. Had to feel pretty good about that one. I'm good. How are you guys? We good. are good. We are good. Seven and six. Like we say, maybe I know there might have been some frustration from you, maybe in that game, but still coming out of there with a W is uh, what really matters. But your biggest takeaway from that game for you guys? Yeah, I think um, we, we came to, to play and we wanted to win the game. And I thought defense and special teams played great. And the offense, I mean, we got it done. So we're just trying to progress every week and um, want to be able to score more points and, and do things better. So that's what we got to do. You know, I know you're out there in Tucson, right? Are you guys in Tucson yet? Are you still in? Uh, yes. Oh, you are in Tucson. So listen, uh, a lot. The big story, one of the big stories today is is just the. I would just call them outbursts, for lack of a better term, Mac. But you just like you know frustration, you know, you know, just you know aggression, whatever you want to call it. Do you have to apologize when you when you kind of lose your cool? Like, do you have to apologize to the team or apologize to the coaches if you if you sh- if you show signs of frustration? Yeah, I think uh, football is an emotional sport, and um, I like to show my passion on the field. And uh, we we're out there to win and and do everything we can to win and. You know, sometimes we just got to put together um, better performance. And a lot of that's just the leadership that it comes from, you know, getting the guys to play and um, doing a good job of working together and just trying to create longer drives and score more points. So um, at the end of the day, it's, it's like I said, it's an emotional game. and You want to be able to show emotion and not let it affect your play. Yeah, so I guess my question was like, so you don't have to apologize, right? Like it's just, I feel like like this is who you are. Like yeah, this I is think, a good thing, you know, right? Yes. Yeah, it's it's football, right? That's it's part of the game. So, um, we're in, um, we're all out there competing, and uh, we're trying to win and make things work. So, you got to work through all the um, problems and solutions, and that's how the course of the game works. You, there's good plays, there's bad plays, there's how do we fix it, and, and we move on to the next drive. So, um, that's like how every game goes at every level. Mac, you mentioned after that Bills game that you were looking to be coached harder, and part of that involved having tough conversations, sometimes confronting the issues head on. Did you feel like the communication between the offensive players, yourself, and the coaching staff was different since that game leading up to this game? I think we've done a good job just trying to be on the same page and iron out the details. So that's all you can ask is just doing the little things and talking with the coaches and players and doing all the little things right. So, Mac, you guys are going to be out there all week long. And, you know, normally when you're back here, you're, you're with your families and friends or anything. But do you think that this could be a good thing for your team, being out there together all week long? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a good thing. I think um, it's important to, to realize that we're out here to have it, do a job. And uh, it's great weather out here. And um, it's a great opportunity to kind of you know, have a really good week and then carry that over to Vegas. So, um, that's the important part, and doing all those things is going to be really important. You know, Mac, is there an advantage to being like under center with uh, your basic play calling as opposed to in the shotgun? Like, is there a benefit to one or the other? Um, I think they're all uh, they're all plays, and um, you just got to execute them as best you can and do the things you can do to make them work. And under center and the shotgun, they're they're all good. So, um, yeah. All right, because I, I guess I, I'm hearing a lot of people saying, we want Mac under center more. Like, what would be the advantage to being under center as opposed to being a shotgun? Would, did you disguise the plays easier in that regard, better for play action? What, would, what, what does that mean? Yeah, I think everyone has a preference, right? And um, at the end of the day, I like to do both. I played in the wing tee in high school and played in the shotgun in college. So I've done both. Uh, the NFLPA, not sure if you saw this, now investigating the Devontae Parker concussion and why the game wasn't stopped uh, immediately kind of when that play happened, that injury. Did you feel like that was handled in an unusual manner Manner when you were in the game, I guess, right there and saw, you know, Nelson Aguilar kind of signaling for it? Um, yeah, I think uh, definitely some people will have jobs to do and um, there's a lot going on in the game and um, I'm, you know, I hope DP is okay. And um, I think, you know, obviously he was, he got out on that play. So um, I know he's doing better and that's, that's important is the health of the players. We're talking to Mac Jones here on the Harbor One hotline and Mac, obviously Damian Harris isn't playing this game or Mondre gets banged up, but Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris step in. How, 
difficult it is for those two guys because rookies to kind of step in and have the role that they have, especially play the level that they had. How hard is that? Yeah, I think we have a, a great room of running backs and Damian, Ramondre, Pierre, Kevin, JJ. So we got a great group of guys and um, they all compete and you can tell that they play for each other and they're competing against each other and um, for them to step up was great and um, Damian and Ramondre have great leadership there and um, yeah, it's a great group of guys and I think any of them can go out there and play at a high level. So I have confidence in everybody. So what about Marcus Jones? Like, like talk about a versatile player. Like, I mean, it's, I mean, are you guys like, uh, uh, you know, like just trying to invent more opportunities for him to get involved? Yeah, I think Marcus is a really fast, talented player. And he, like I said in, yesterday, I mean, he's, he's on special teams. He's on defense. He's on this and that. So he just does a great job and he's a great team player. And, um, we have a lot of guys on our team like him, and we all want to play like that. So definitely proud of him and got to continue to grow and do things better. And however we can you know, put the best players on the field, that's how we have to do it. And um, it could be for a certain defense or a certain look we're trying to get. And um, he's just done a good job of stepping up. Is he, is he the fastest? Is like Because Pierre Strong looks fast as heck. Who's the fastest back out there? Honestly, they're all fast. <laughs> but who's the fastest, <laughs> Mac? Who, who's the fastest? Um, I don't know. You'd have to tell them to race each other and or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going with Marcus. They're all, they're all pretty fast. Mm. Uh, so yeah. I know, I know, he's fast. I know you guys saw the Raiders in the preseason and spent some time out in Vegas with Josh, but um, Josh McDaniels. Is it, and I guess, are you approaching this, you guys, with practice, preparing to see Josh? Is it like an unusual preparation when you're going to be going up against a coach who knows you so well after having coached you as the offensive coordinator all last year when he was with you guys? Yeah, I think, you know, every head coach is going to, you know, have their input on the game plan. And um, Josh is a, a great football coach and he knows how to attack defenses and, Obviously, he's familiar with me and um, a little bit of our system and all that stuff. So, at the end of the day, it's just they have good players and good coaches, and um, we have good players and good coaches. So, it just comes down to execution. You know, before the question of the week, what was the one thing that 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 uh, that you remember most about what uh, Joshua Daniels taught you? Was there anything that stands out more than others? Yeah, I think Josh is a a great coach and um, pushed me really hard and coached me hard and. Um, we just worked together and we were with each other every day and working hard. So he expects a lot of, out of his players and he's a smart, smart guy. He's got great memory, great recall. He remembers things from certain games and, and all that. So definitely a great coach um, and looking forward to, you know, going against them, you know, this weekend. So. All right. So it's time for the quarterback question of the week uh, for Mac Jones, which is sponsored by Northeast men's health, where they specialize in taking care of men's sexual health. They have offices in Dedham near Legacy Place in Salem, New Hampshire, in Marlboro, serving Metro West, and now in Woburn. Learn more at northeastmenshealth.com. So, Mac, this question is, um, um, I mean, I, I heard you last night uh, in the postgame uh, talking about Mike Leach, who was a longtime head coach, um, creator, one of the creators of the Air Raid offense. And I heard you, obviously he passed away, and I heard you telling a story about him. I was wondering – if you could share that with our listeners as something, because I, I think you said he recruited you. Yeah. Yeah. He was, um, like you said, just sad news to hear that and prayers to his family and everything. Um, definitely a tough situation, but he offered me a scholarship at um, Washington state, um, obviously over the phone. And, you know, he gave me an early offer and kind of took a chance on me. So I appreciate that. And obviously got a chance to play against him at Mississippi state and, took his hand after the game and all that. So love watching his interviews, love watching him coach. Uh, he's just a great, he's, he was a great football coach and, and a great guy. It seemed like, so i um, definitely, definitely saddened to hear that news. What was he like on the phone? Was he like <laughs> some of his interviews we're going to play and we're right when we get off the phone with you. Like, was he, was he, was he serious or was he quirky? Was he, you know, did he give you any weird knowledge, you know, like what was <laughs> he like advice? on the phone? Any advice? Like, was it just like, Hey, you're awesome. I want to play. When'd you come to Wazoo? Yeah, I mean, he, from what I remember, obviously it was a long time ago, but, you know, he was just very, you know, he said he watched my tape and liked what I did and felt like I could be a good fit in their offense. So um, he wasn't, 
you know, he was funny on the phone and stuff, but just he kind of was the same guy, I think, regardless of, you know, on the radio or on in media or on the field. So he's the same guy and um, definitely sad to, to lose him, but um, definitely a great coach and hopefully his impact and legacy will, will last for a long time. All right, Mac. Well, listen, thanks for joining us. And, um, you know, I'm going to be off the show here probably in a few weeks. I don't know if I'll talk to you again. I just wanted to say I wish you all the best. Uh, I hope that next year this team puts you in a, in, a, in a position to succeed, surrounds you with not just the talent and maybe the coaches to do that. So I wish you all the best in the future as well as Sunday against the Raiders. And thanks for joining us, buddy. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. There it is. Mac Jones.